Okay, let's finish these up. Two volume problems and L'Hopital's rule. Where are we? Let's see, here we are. So we're taking a region and rotating it around the x-axis. Here's the region in question. So it's connected to the x-axis. Here's the radius. So we're going from x squared to zero. The radius is x squared. And pi, the integral from Zero to two, that's given in the problem. The radius squared, x squared squared is x to the fourth. We can anti-differentiate. Let me see, stick zero in, we get zero, two, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. So I make this thirty-two fifths times pi. The next volume question, that would be number 11, y equals x squared plus one, and y equals negative x plus three. So you see, here's the region between these two curves. And uh, I, I could, by the way, I could even, let's see, x squared plus one is less than y, is less than negative x plus three. So here's the region. And you see we are rotating it around this line, y equals zero, that is not connected to the region. And this is where the washer method shows up. You connect the curve to the, I mean, the line, the axis of rotation. You draw a line until you hit the region. That's your inner radius. And you keep going until you're through the region. And that's your outer radius. We are integrating from what to what? From negative two to positive one. Back 
to the document camera, the outer radius squared. Okay, this is y equals zero. This is y equals negative x plus three. So negative x plus three minus zero. Outer radius squared minus, this is x squared plus one. So x squared plus one minus zero. The outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. And this is going to be kind of tedious, but foil this. x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus. This is x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 1. So minus x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 1. Some cancellation occurs. X squared minus 2x squared, negative x squared minus 6x plus 8 minus x to the fourth. And then you can finish this up. It's uh, going to be kind of tedious, but hopefully these antiderivatives are all straightforward. And you plug in negative two and one and subtract. The next problem is L'Hopital's rule. So 12a and 12b, I'm not trying to trick anyone, but there's a reason there's an A and a B. Let me copy these both down. And share my notebook. Okay. Everything here is continuous. So to investigate limits, we can just plug zero in. The cosine of zero is one, one minus one, zero squared. This is an indeterminate form, zero divided by zero. We apply L'Hopital's rule. So the derivative of one is zero. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. In the denominator, the derivative of x squared is 2x. Once again, these are continuous. 
to investigate the limit, we just let x be zero. Now the sine of zero is zero. Two times zero is zero. This is still an indeterminate form. But no longer. Now, when we let x be zero, the cosine of zero is one, and we have one over two. 12b. The trick here, and again, it's not like I'm really trying to trick people, but as x goes to zero, the natural log goes to negative infinity. And negative infinity over zero is not an indeterminate form. The denominator going to zero makes a fraction big. The numerator going to infinity makes a fraction big. So these things aren't fighting each other. They're both causing the fraction to go to infinity. And this limit simply doesn't exist. Now, there is one more problem. I know you didn't like this section. Um, this problem is so much more intricate than anything I'm interested in doing that it's probably not worthwhile spending 10 or 20 minutes or whatever going over this. You should know that work is the integral of force. Maybe there'll be some kind of simple, I shouldn't say simple, but some kind of straightforward Hooke's rule problem or something like that. There's not going to be anything like this.